Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Good to see you. Um, so I want to work on some junk mail envelopes today um, because this one here is going to be for the altered file folder that I've been working on uh, on video with you. Um, <clears throat> and then I thought, well, if I'm going to funny about with, uh, with uh, decorating this up and everything, I might as well make another one. So I thought we would just do a video on making uh, this. So my idea for this is I want to um, have these as top loader pockets with obviously the pretty windows at the bottom and I want to attach a flap um, in scrapbook paper and we're going to have a policy closure um, so you know they're going to be sort of like this. That's sort of the, the idea behind it um, and I'm hoping that I might also be able to use up some of my um, Edith Holden scraps at the same time. Okie dokie. So I think the first thing to do will be to uh, cover the envelopes. So um, obviously I want to cover up all of the like junk mail envelope type stuff. Um, now both of them are lined. We did this one together on the first uh, part of the altered file folder and then I just uh, done the same here just so that when we remove our journal cards or tags or whatever from the window we have something nice to look at and not the um the you know the security part of the envelope um so that's what i've done to prepare and then they're open on most sides um this one's open on three sides this one is also open on three sides and that's really just to make it easier for me to get in in places and then obviously we can glue up the different bits uh, once we're finished decorating. So, to start with, um, I want to cover up the sort of junk mail side of things. Um, so to do that, I'm going to use Music Sheet because that's what I've used in one of the pieces in the altered file folder when we've done, um, uh, we've done junk mail envelope pockets before. And I thought that would help just sort of keep it in keeping. <clears throat> Keep it in keeping. That's a bit of a mouthful. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one first of all. Um, so I've got to remember how I did this now because we did this uh, when I lasted, lasted them where basically we just sort of tear around the window um, with the music sheet. So um, I think what I'll do first of all is I'll tear off the side that doesn't have any music on it and I think then that way I can bunch that up and yeah bunch that up against the side of the envelope I think that might be the easiest and I'll do the same with the bottom tell you what I'll just do it on all sides and then <laughs> that would uh, that would help things I think Okay, just checking the, the height of it. So yeah, it's been a while since I've done um, envelopes like this. So hopefully I can remember what it is that we were doing. Okay, so I'm laying the music sheet on top and I'm just having a look as to where the window is. And I'm just going to of curve this round a bit just so that I can get a faint line and then I'm just going to tear it. And I'm just checking where the window is. Okay. As I say, I don't need it to be like perfect. I'm not after perfection today. I'm rarely after perfection when it comes to stuff like this, to be honest, because, yeah, if you try, if you strive for perfection, then you just, you might end up getting disappointed with this kind of method, but hopefully you can sort of see what I'm doing. I know it's a little bit of a, a faff. Okay. a little bit over 
too much on that side, but I think that's okay. So essentially that's what we've got. Because I can always put some something there or some decoration. I think that will be just fine. So I think the easiest thing will be to pop some glue on the envelope. Pop the music sheet down in the place that I want it to be. And then I'm just going to simply cut around it. Nice and simple, I think. Okay, let's go for this then. So I'm just using Kalau because it's nice and quick. I think I've <laughs> lost count of how many times I've told you that on video. But yeah, it's it, it really is a good glue. Um, you just have to be careful with not getting it everywhere. <laughs> Or I have to be careful anyway of not getting it everywhere. Okay. So my main thing is making sure that I've got the bottom of the envelope in the right place. And then everything else can be inked, decorated and whatnot. Okay, alrighty, I'm just going to, I'm actually going to tear it I think, just because I'm having, I'm having much better luck with tearing than I am cutting these days, she says. <laughs> yep, and that, just that bit there, because that's only a small bit, I'll just cut that one. Okay, <clears throat> so we have that, which is looking okay, and then I think I just want to ink these parts here, probably should have done that before gluing them down, but <laughs> never mind, there's always a chance to do these things, I always forget to ink stuff before gluing anyway. Nothing new there. So I hope you're all doing well. It's a Sunday today. Um, not sure what day this video will go up but it's a Sunday when I'm filming. So I'm looking forward to just a, whoops, a nice relaxed day of crafting. Okay, just want to close that up. And put that to one side and then we'll just get the other one to the same, the same, uh, the same, yeah, same place. So yeah, we've got obviously a little bit of a, a tear just there, but that's okay. We can always put something on that, um, if needs be, if it's going to bother us. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit of tidying up just to make sure I'm all glued down right and and everything and then I'm going to ink around them and we'll move on to the next step after that. Okay so moving on to the next step. Um, now because we're going to have a flap um, on this we need to uh, make this envelope easier to get into because as it stands there's no, I mean I could put a thumb notch but it's just not going to be enough. So I'm just going to bend this uh, front piece over and that's why we've opened it on all sides so that we can easily do this so I'm just bending it here now that's as far down as I want to go just so that then I can have like a, a tab and make whatever is in there easier to get into now nothing wrong with just folding it over and and whatnot but I want to give it a bit of a nicer edge so I'm opening up the envelope and I'm just going to pinch corner to corner like that and then where I've got the crease that tells me how sort of low down that I want to go. So I'm just going to come from this end like this and I'm just going to do almost like a curved line so you, like this 
and that might be a little bit too pointy in the two corners but that's a slightly nicer edge than if it was just folded over so yeah I think I will just bend those round again and just make it a little bit less pointy so more like that I suppose there we are I'm happy with that um, so now we get sort of a, a nice bit of a nicer edge and of course where I've lined the envelope with the Edith Holden text you can see some of that at the top as well rather than security envelope now uh, with the doing you know envelopes like this if we were happy to lose some of the height of our envelope we could have always used the, the envelope itself to fold over as a flap um, but because I didn't want to lose any height um, at all um, I have opted for the option of um, adding a flap so we're going to something like this add our own little flap so let me I've got this one pre-prepared but I will show you uh, what I did so I've got um, a piece of just a scrap of scrap of paper and I've cut it to the uh, width of my envelope so I've got that done and I want to just have a little look at how far down I want my flap to be so for example here we've got this much of a flap maybe I want it a little bit smaller than that so you just sort of gauge yeah how big a flap you want to have I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to make a little mark on the back um, because that tells me um, where where the envelope sort of stops now using that mark as a guide we can then uh, where's the if we don't lose the mark that is where's it gone yeah I really couldn't see that mark so I've just made another one so this is the mark I'm going with ignore this one because I decided I wanted um, a little bit less of a flap so here is where our envelope was going to stop um, in terms of that's that's what our flap is going to be um, so that is where we want to put our crease mark or at least you know as close to that as you can get obviously I've gone a little bit up um, just because that's where the the score line was okay and I'm just going to bone folder that down okay so you basically get this um, and then we're going to round the corners on the the part that is going to flap over the front and then that can be uh, glued onto the back so with this one with the flap I have to be careful not to glue my flap on so with this one I have to go I have to glue it with the flap open so I might want to take off just a sliver from this one so I'll show you on the other one because it's a little bit easier if you're just simply making a piece to go in your journal then this is how you would do it so let's get that front part inked up just the parts that you can see okay and then we're just going to simply glue it onto the back of our envelope okay <clears throat> now I am leaving the teeniest of gaps like not even worth mentioning type of a gap from the crease line just to make it a little bit easier for opening and closing and if we were to put you know stuff in the envelope then it just gives us that little bit of extra room really 
and probably you know it's probably not needed but always to be best to be safe than sorry and if we've glued it in the right place we should be able to fold it over just give it a little bit of a bone folder down and then we've got our little flap on the front there so if you open it up this will be the part that you can get into and this will be yeah looking like an envelope again so that's the that's the easy option <laughs> if you are wanting to keep the flap in like for this one I, I need to because I've got um I'm using the flap as part of a flip out then uh, I have to just be conscious of that I think that should be fine so I'm going to glue it um, yeah I'm gonna glue it with the flap open so I'll just move this one out of the way so we can concentrate on this one so I'm gluing it with the flap open okay so yeah to make it easy for myself I'm gonna glue this one with the flap open I'm just making sure that we're in the in the right place So yeah, flap open, envelope flap open, and then we can glue the back here. As I say, the flap, having the flap on it makes it a little bit trickier than if you were just, yeah, just making a piece of ephemera, but... I thought I will show you both because it may give you some options. So here we still have our flap to make it a flip out. It's basically the very, very long winded way of saying that's what I was trying to do. Okay, so I've got different flap sizes. Um, this one's a little bit uh, longer than the other one. Um, not for any other reason than just um, what I preferred the look of at the time. Okay, so we've still got our envelopes completely open. So I think now it would be a good chance for us to do the um, the policy closure. So we want to get some circles. So I'm just using some scraps of my Edith Holden, um, just because I thought that would be the the nicest thing, and it gets them used up. Just like little bits like this, where there's not really anything anything on it it's ideal for stuff like this so let me just get a few of these so uh, for these I'm going to use this one um, and because they're only thin paper I'm going to grab like another another one and I'm just going to glue them together um, so let's do that okay so that's that's the first one and this one okay so the first thing that I want to do is um, decide what is going to go where. So these are the ones you're going to see. So I've got a little bit of a flower and some leaves, which I like like so. And then we're going to pick up one of the plain ones and just stab through the middle. Making sure I've got that where I want it to go. I think I'm just going to turn it round, have it go the other way. Not for any other reason than just I prefer how, how it looks. All right, so because we've still got the window open, this makes it nice and easy for um, 
getting the bread through. So I'm going to use this one as a guide just to tell me where I would want the hole to be. I believe about there. So watching my fingers, pop that through. Pop in our bread. And then just open that up. I'm just going to uh, flatten them down like so. Yep, I think that's that's about right. I'm not bothered if it's not completely in the in the middle or anything. Okay. There's my one here. Do the same on this one. Now here's where I do want things to line up, just because I obviously want them to be, yeah, have the uh, have the two circles vaguely in line with each other. But again, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm not striving for perfection, so I think we want to be about there. Yeah, I've got a mark, so I'm going to go through this again, watching my fingers. Oops. Went through really easily. <laughs> okay, and then we can open that up. Again, just really clumsy. <laughs> Is anyone else this clumsy? Is it just me? There we are. Oh, that's not nice. look so sweet. So. We've got that bunny rabbit that is upside down or sort of horizontal and we also have the bread legs to cover up so I think now would be a good time to stop my faffing <laughs> and uh, so I just want to make sure that it's in the, the right place there we go yeah I think those look really smart with the with that nice neutral green with the music sheet and then we've got a little bit of colour from those um, so that's looking good so we've done that part so as I say I want to cover up the bread legs and um, <laughs> my little right hand side hairs, upside down hairs so I thought the easiest thing would be to uh, grab some of my scraps again these are from the Edith Holden books just where I've made you know journal cards or cut things down to size and I thought if we just go with something you know that's again relatively neutral that that and it doesn't mind being on the side so if it's just a little bit of greenery or something then I thought uh yeah that would that would work fine so kidoki so I think the easiest thing again is just to put some glue on the flap and uh We'll just cut off the excess. Oh, sorry about the squeakiness. It's, uh, I'm trying to be so careful not to pull out, get out too much glue because I don't want it seeping out everywhere, you know. Okay, so I'm just manoeuvring that into place. Obviously, I don't want to go over my crease line. we don't want it to get in the way of the flap or anything so you will see this little bit of a line from the old scrapbook paper if that bothers you then um, you know you could put some washi down or just lots and lots of ink and that will um that will sort that out okay so let's uh, cut this off my uh, concentration <laughs> okay Oops. got a little bit of something there but that's okay okay and then I just want to round those corners again Okay, 
a little bit of ink and that should be that nicely covered that's that yeah and that's given the flap a little bit of um strength as well um it was you know good quality scrapbook paper but one layer is always going to be a little bit on the thin side at least this way yeah it's given that little bit of added strength just uh ink that up a little bit more and then we have some pretty decoration on our flap as well looking good all right so that needs help with lying flat because obviously you know we have only just uh, scored those so we need to give it a bit of time and when it's sitting in a book and once it's tied down with the string and everything it will start behaving itself <laughs> so that's those two done now i think whilst we're here and whilst we have the envelopes open um i am going to just pop a little bit of tape uh, on the back of these brad legs just to stop them from catching on anything that we put in the pockets so this is framers tape um so it's nice and strong but if you don't have that then um and you can like really get it in there like goes down nice and flat if you don't have that kind of a thing, just a little bit of washi or even a, a circle of paper on the back will work just fine. Um, it just means that when you're then sliding things in and out, you're not going to have something catch on those legs. I mean, we've done them quite flat anyway, so this is probably overkill, but you can never be too sure. So I normally just do this. Uh, where possible especially as you can't see it so you know we've got no problems to pop that in okay so those are those um so i think now we're in a position where we should get them closed up um <laughs> mainly just so that i don't forget to do it so i'm going to close top and bottom uh, not top and bottom left and right and I'm going to do it on the side that we cut um, because that will be that will end up being the shortest side. And I'm trying my absolute hardest to just do a thin layer, but whatever goes in the envelope can be um, cut down to size. So it's no no biggie. If you're like me and um, your hand refuses to give you a straight line of glue. You just love that sound. <laughs> I'm really liking these. Okay, now this one again. Um, oh, need to, ooh, that's come off there. Just to get some extra glue on there. So again, we'll do the side that we cut. That doesn't want to lay down flat, you know. I think it's just the heat. My glues, glues do some odd things in the heat. I keep having that feeling that I'm not filming, and yet yeah, I am. Every time I check, I'm like, no, it's it's definitely filming. I just. Uh, Keep getting that feeling it's it's a strange feeling and i know it's just not it's not just me that gets it you just me think did i i hit play again didn't i <laughs> okay all righty yeah really liking these Okay, so aside from putting in some string and obviously uh, finding something to go in the pockets, just a bit of extra glue on that one, uh, we're ready to decorate, I think. So I'm just going to grab a drink um, and then we'll move on to decoration. I've got various 
sort of large uh, large flowers from the books and I've also got little butterflies and smaller flowers so um, yeah I think we'll just choose a couple of those and uh, move on from there okay so I think we're gonna close up the um, uh, the policy closure now so I've just got some simple brown twine it's nice thin twine this so um, although strong um, will be able to slip under there quite easily. So I've just gone around the top two circles and I'm going to tie a knot and that knot is just going to go as tightly as I can but with whilst being gentle because you can rip through your brad. And then I'm going to bring the twine round to the other side and tie another knot. Again, just pulling that in. Okay, <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna wrap this around and then cut the excess off on this side. So just grab in there and then just poke that end in. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then normally with this long tail, I'll go around a couple of times at the top just to keep it nice and secure. And then we're going to come down and do like a, a figure of eight a couple of times. And then leave a tail. Um, I'm going to leave a longer tail because I may add a charm or some beads or something to the end. And then that way we get this nice little figure of eight motion like this. And that opens up. So I'll do that again for the second one, just so that it's clear what I'm doing. Sometimes it is nice to see things a couple of times. Okay. So again, this should be long enough. So we're going to come at the top of the two circles. You might need to manoeuvre them slightly to get in there. And we're going to come round and tie a knot. Okay, that knot's going to slip in with our brad. Come round to the other side. That just adds a little bit of extra security. That's the only reason I do that. And we're going to tie another knot on this side. Again, pull that under. And then we're going to come around with our little tail. Just to give it, again, a little bit of extra security. Snip off the excess. Poke in whatever you can see poking out because we don't want to be able to see that little tail. Sometimes easier said than done. And then we're just going to go around a couple of times with our long tail. And then we can do our figure of eight. <laughs> she says. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, figure of eight a couple of times. And then... As I say, I might add a, a charm to it, so I'm just going to have a little bit of an extra tail, but I'm going to keep that out of the way just to just whilst I work on them. So that's those. Looking good. Alrighty. Just press those down a bit, make sure my circles haven't moved and whatnot. Okay, so let's think about some embellishments. Okay, so I was just um, I was just having a look at what I wanted in the windows. Um, so I'm potentially going to have this bird in one of the windows, maybe the uh, the wider window. But um, yeah, I was just trying out um to yeah help me um help me decide what I wanted. But for the most part, I was going by size. So. Uh, with this one, obviously we've got the, the tear marks here, which I kind of want to 
the skies a little bit as best I can anyway. So I was going for something that was maybe a little bit wider as a piece. You know, we've got lots and lots of flowers um, so that I can try and maybe position them in such a way as to like um, cover some of that up a little bit. Um, so maybe something like that. And I didn't want to go too high up um, because I feel like it then sort of competes with the... Oh no, maybe not. Maybe if I take off that that this flower here, I thought like it was obviously getting in the way of the policy closure and competing with it a little bit, but I don't know, something like that. And then for this one, um, I didn't have anything to cover up too much on this side, so... Um, I just went with what flower I liked and I think I like this pink one and then I felt like you know me <laughs> I love to add a label so then I thought just to finish it off the pink and the pink go together and then we can have this one have a, a more botanical kind of a label I think I might change what I've got in the window because it does look a little bit busy with the bird as well as the flowers but um yeah, we'll just we'll just see. Uh, but I'm definitely happy with the decoration, so I'm just going to get them down. And that will be that will be everything for for these. Um, so this one is uh, the one for the file folder. Uh, hopefully, it's still got the flap on it. So on the back of that one will be uh, uh, I've got three pockets that I've made, uh, which will go on the back. Um, and then for this one that I'm gluing at the moment. Um, I mean, really, it's uh, it's just a, a bonus. Um, I might use it in a file folder or I might not. Um, it doesn't, obviously, I've glued the flap down, so it'll have to uh, be glued down onto a page or onto a panel. Um, it won't be a flappy piece in itself, whereas that one is. Um, but I hope I hope the video was, was clear enough. I know it was, um, I was sort of... Um, I had a you know an idea of what I wanted to do and what I needed to do, but um, yeah, it was one of those days. <laughs> My brain sort of uh, shut off <laughs> before I'd even begun, I suppose. And I don't really know why, but it, it, it happens. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> okay, right. Let's get this flower on then. I do I do I do like how they've turned out now I'm not going to glue those leaves down because I might cut them off I haven't quite decided it depends what goes in the window probably um, and then obviously I'll just trim these ones on the side I'm sort of part wondering whether we should have any leaves sort of because this part is a little bit empty maybe always have more flowers something might have a look at that in a minute or more greenery just to fill things in equally it might be a bit too much I don't know that's pretty the butterfly I'll have, I'll have a think I'll get the uh, the label on and then I'll make a call it's one of those things it's like you'll lay something down without glue um, and you'll love it and then you put as soon as you put the glue on it, it's like I still like it, but it then feels like oh maybe is something is missing. Um, I don't know if that's just me that experiences things like that, but uh, happens to me often where I'll be looking at it and thinking, well I liked it when it wasn't glued. <laughs> um, you know, in terms of like it was exactly what you're after, and then I suppose it's to do with like how flat it goes when you glue it. Maybe it's something to do with that. Okay, so yeah, I need to need to decide whether to keep those leaves there or just to cut them off. Um, and then I'll just cut these. I do like these. All right, let's um get this one glued on then as well. Yeah, I love using envelopes with junk journal stuff. It's just you can do so many different things um, with them. 
and uh, and the best bit is is we get plenty of envelopes from um banks and bills and all that stuff it might be one day when everyone goes you know completely paperless that we will struggle to get uh window envelopes and this type of an envelope but um <laughs> we'll all start buying them but uh at least for now they're still in circulation everywhere so i'm going to do our best to to use them and give them a purpose which yeah it's just one of many many things that i love about this craft is not only is it fun and pretty and interesting you're also doing good for the recycling and everything as well it's um you know so like i've seen a lot of posts about people who are concerned about um cutting up books to use in junk journals and and things like that um for the purpose of like they they feel bad about cutting up the book um now i i don't because the books that i get somebody lots of people have thrown them out you know they've ended up in secondhand bookshops for a reason they've ended up in being discarded from libraries for a reason nobody's reading them and so you know at least you're giving them a purpose and uh, all the rest of it okay i realize i've added the glue <laughs> and i wasn't totally sure where i was having this okay Too busy talking. <laughs> yeah, I think that's covered up quite a bit of the uh, the issues. So I'm just going to cut off this petal because I think it is um, well, it's getting in the way of the uh, the policy closure, but it also it's also too too top heavy uh, with that on it. So I'm just going to sneak in here and just take that off. Again, sorry if you can see the top of my head. <laughs> it's <laughs> tricky to see when you're, you know, leaning this far back out of the line of the camera and everything. There we are. Yes, I like that. Okay. Let's just cut off the bits that we don't need. Oops. Got stuff stuck to my scissors. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I use my rubbish scissors. Uh, cheapy scissors when I'm... Um, cutting gluey stuff rather than my nice scissors <laughs> well you could just leave it to dry and then cut it Justine that would save your scissors but <laughs> I'm far too impatient for that right, let's just get those those overhangs here there we are lovely lovely um, and then I've got this label, which I think I want to go underneath that leaf. Something like, oops, that. Seeing if I can, I want to move that leaf down slightly if I can, or at least move the left, move the label up a bit. Didn't want it covering all of the uh, the writing on the label. There we are. Yes, I like those. I like those a lot. They were simple to do. There's just steps to remember. Now, I think this one, I don't want anything else on it. Um, it does feel plenty. Um, might be because we've got the bed, so I'll probably change my mind about what I'm going to have in the window. Uh, no surprises there. But this one, I think because it's a wider envelope as well, I do feel like I want to see about something else. Um, it might be overkill. Um, I don't know, I feel like, you know, sometimes you just get that feeling it's missing something. Equally, maybe it's not, and it's just my imagination. 
Um, I'm going to have a look through my fussy cuts just to see if I've got a selection of like little flowers like that and almost have sort of a gr it growing up the side. Uh, excuse me. So I'm just going to be uh, two secs. I'll just see if I've got something. Okay, so I've decided I definitely don't want the bird in the window because I felt like it was too much. Um, I like the I like the cleanness of that one. So I'm going to leave it as that and then I'll find something a little bit more understated for in the window. Um, so that's that one. This one, I feel like I do want more over here. So I was just having a little look at uh, some other pink flowers that I've got um, to see if I could have... Just something like that, which I think helps. And then, <laughs> not finished yet, um, I did feel like I wanted this butterfly. Um, of course, now I'm looking down here and thinking I could really do with another little pink flower. Um, and I'm thinking I could potentially just have this little piece, a little piece of that in down there also going to look at some greenery but no I feel like the green is too much because it's such a wide wide bit but possibly little bits of that cascading pink and I do feel like I want a butterfly there but this one might be a little bit on the big side um so I'll get the I'll get these flowers down first because I was definitely sure about that. As I say, I just felt like it was a uh, um, yeah. I just felt like it was a little bit empty in that corner. I think because the envelope was wider uh, first of all, and the flap was shorter, so I felt like I had more space to play with on that one in terms of um, yeah, in terms of what I was going to have on it. you see what I mean <clears throat> but we're almost done uh, so if you do want to stick around that's cool <laughs> if not uh, then at least you've seen how to actually make the make the piece the uh, the embellishing for me is always the the hardest part the longest part and whatnot um, I think it um, I think it gets easier with time um, but uh, but yeah I still still not completely au fait with stuff yet I think more than anything it's because I doubt myself um, actually that's all I think it is is yeah I just I doubt what what it is that I'm after because we don't always know okay I do feel like that butterfly is a little bit on the big side. It's the right colour, but a bit big, so I'll look for something else later. Um, for now, though, I'm just going to decide if I want any more pink or a little bit of greenery. gonna see about um, I'm just gonna cut this flower off here like so because I like the pink down somewhere there something um, and then I was just wondering whether I should maybe cut off some of these leaves Um, because all of them is too much, so I'm part wondering whether we could have something. I think we 
just invented a new a new flower. <laughs> Let me just see. I do like that it fills up the space. I've glued that very well, so I just want to see if we can maybe slip that in in the background a bit and then have that that on top. I'm going to go with it. Um, it might be a little bit too much, but I feel like otherwise maybe it's a little bit a little bit plain. Um, I think just because I, as I say, I had more space to play with. I had a thinner a thinner flower, whereas that one was a smaller envelope and a much like wider expanding flower. Like it it grows outwards kind of thing. So let's get this greenery in and then I promise I'm done um, I am still contemplating a butterfly but I think as much as I love the yellow and the pink together I feel like maybe size wise it's a little bit little bit big um, so we're going to yeah I'll, I'll see you later if I've got something a little bit more subtle Sometimes I also need to sit with things for a while before confirming embellishments. But it's tricky when, when it comes to videos is that I always feel like I want to show you the finished piece because it, it can impact whether somebody actually wants to, to make the thing or not. Um, you know, sometimes it's the embellishments and the way that it all comes together at the end that makes somebody want to go on and make that thing. Um, it could just be me. Maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but you know, that's sort of my, my thoughts on it really. Alrighty. So I'm going to leave it there for now. As I say, I'm still contemplating butterfly, but now that I've added this in, yeah, I still, I do, I do want a butterfly there. And I really like that. <laughs> I really, really like that. But I'm going to sit with it for a bit before before I confirm for definite that's what I want. So um, let me show you on this one then. So we've obviously got our policy closure. I could add a charm or a bead or something to the end of this and I might might very well do. And then you get your, your nice deep pocket that goes all the way down like so. And yeah, best bit can't see any bread legs <laughs> yeah I'm really happy with those I think they look smashing so I hope that is inspired you to give them a go trust me they are easy I hope that I have you know shown that okay on video um it is difficult to know um sometimes whether the video has been clear until you actually watch it back but I'll do my best to edit it in a way so that it does it does seem clear for you and they are easy to do um, so don't be fooled by my uh, my video or anything. Um, and um, yeah, I hope you'll you'll consider giving them a go. I think they look absolutely fabulous, and I can't wait to get on to use them now. So I will leave you there for now. I'll say goodbye, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye bye for now.